fly for you. <laughs> All ready? Good morning, everyone. My name is Thomas Shaw. First, I'd like to thank all the elected officials, business leaders, brothers and sisters in labor, members of clergy, community leaders, and SEPTA officials for coming here today. I've proudly dedicated 20 years to working with SEPTA. I'm also a proud member of TWU Local 234, a union that stands... <laughs> a union that stands for fairness, dignity, and the rights of workers. Unions like ours are the backbone of the working class. We fight for fair wages, safe conditions, and respect on the job. That's why having leaders who stand with workers is so important. Leaders like Governor Shapiro, who understand the vital role mass transit plays in Pennsylvania, as well as the value of a fair contract, as evidenced by his personal involvement in helping TWU Local 234 secure a tentative agreement with SEPTA just two days ago and avoiding a devastating strike. Investing in transit is investing in our communities. It connects hundreds of thousands to jobs, schools, and essential services. With Governor Shapiro's leadership, we can ensure that transit workers are treated fairly and that we continue to build a stronger future for all Pennsylvanians. It's my honor to introduce someone who has always championed fairness, opportunity, and progress for working families, Governor Josh Shapiro. Thank you, thank you, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be with all of you here today. And uh, let me begin by saying thank you to Thomas. I want to say thank you, Thomas, for all you and your colleagues do for the great city of Philadelphia. You drive these buses. Workers keep them clean. You all keep us safe. And you welcome our fellow Pennsylvanians onto that bus with a smile on your face. You are what makes this system run, and we are grateful to all of SEPTA's workers every single day. Thank you. It's good to be here in Frankfurt with Mayor Parker. Madam Mayor, thank you for joining us. Thank you to Council President Johnson and all the members of council who join us here today. I want to say thank you to Madam Speaker McClinton. Together, <laughs> together with Leader Bradford, Chairman Harris, and so many members of the Philadelphia and regional delegations in the legislature who join us, I want to also welcome Chairman Hughes from our state senate and his colleagues in the State Senate. Thank you. We managed to be able to show county leaders where Frankfurt is, including Matt Bradford, who made his way here today. And, and I want to say uh, thank you to the leaders of Delco and Montgomery County, Bucks County, who are here with us today and who have shown such a willingness to believe in SEPTA and consider this to be the vital regional asset that it is. I know we got a lot of leaders from organized labor who join us today, the folks who build these communities, who make our communities run, leaders from TWU to the folks at FOP who keep us safe. I want to thank all of them and of course the building trades who build all of this infrastructure and keep us moving every day. Thank you. And we've got a whole lot of community and civic and educational leaders like our superintendent who join us here today. And of course, we're grateful to be joined by the SEPTA leadership, the board and the staff who recognize just how important this is. You know, as your governor, I, I am blessed to be able to travel all across this great commonwealth every single day to meet our fellow Pennsylvanians where they are. And I am focused like a laser beam on getting stuff done for all Pennsylvanians, delivering real results for those who need us most. You know, together we've delivered historic funding for our public schools. We've invested in public safety invested more than ever in our police 
and pass some of the most historic criminal justice reforms at the same time. We are, we are competitive again when it comes to economic development, putting people to work and creating economic opportunity no matter what zip code you live in, whether a rural, urban, or suburban community. And you know what else we've done together? We've invested historic amounts in our infrastructure together. You know, literally one month ago today, I was standing out in Mannheim Township, out in rural Lancaster County. I was listening to folks in that community talk about how because we came together to fix the bridge over Rife Run, that they were able to get to work quicker. They were able to get home to their kids for dinner a whole lot sooner than they were when the bridge was out. In my first two years as your governor, we've delivered over $330 million in new funding for roads and bridges all across Pennsylvania. Now, I'm proud of that fact that with that money, we have repaired more structurally deficient bridges in Pennsylvania than any other state in the entire country. And you know, I mean, you know I am competitive as hell. So when we get the chance to beat another state or beat every other state, we should celebrate that. By the way, I see my man Ryan Boyer wearing a Sixers hat. I wouldn't mind if the Sixers had that same competitive spirit when they're out on the court every day. Come on. But in addition, in addition, in addition to beating every other state in the nation with the number of bridges we've repaired, we also managed to fix 7,000 miles of Pennsylvania roadways more than any other time in the last decade. We're investing in our infrastructure, and gang, that's the get shit done attitude we talk about every single day in Pennsylvania. It's what we live by, and it's essential to folks. It's essential to the trades folks that are building out that infrastructure. It's essential to our businesses that rely on those roads and bridges to get folks to work. And of course, it's essential for those families that rely on it. That's something we should all be proud of. But listen, I'm mindful that for some people when they're going to church, or some people when they're going to school, or some people when they're just trying to get home for dinner, their travels don't take them over a rural bridge. Instead, it requires you to ride a bus, and it requires you to live in a community where hopping on a trolley or regional rail or the subway is the only way you can get around, and the only efficient way you can get to and from where you need to go. And so, just like we repair and maintain our roads and bridges in those rural and in those suburban communities, I think we owe it to the good people of Pennsylvania who take mass transit to be there for them and their families as well. Now, I'm mindful, and I know my colleagues in the Capitol are mindful that mass transit agencies all across Pennsylvania are struggling right now. That's why back in February, when I introduced my budget, I proposed the first major new investment in public transit in more than a decade. I value mass transit. The House of Representatives, led by Speaker McClinton and Leader Bradford and Chairman Harris, saw to it that my proposal for mass transit passed not once, not twice, but three different times in the House of Representatives. And I would note 
Notwithstanding the fact that their majority is just by a slim one seat, they managed to pass it on a bipartisan basis. Three times it passed in the House, and it never was passed in the State Senate. You see, the State Senate asked me to consider marrying new funding for mass transit with new funding for roads and bridges. I agreed to that. Then the State Senate asked if we could find a new revenue source to fund increases for mass transit. I agreed to that as well. But the Senate was never able to get it done. Now, I'm not here today to point any fingers because I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying, just speaking facts, Chairman Hughes. But listen, while long-term sustainable funding for mass transit is really unfinished business for all of us, the fact is we've been able to get Republicans and Democrats together in Harrisburg to actually come together and get a lot done, from education to making sure we look out for those in the intellectual disability community. We've managed to actually come together and do good things together. And I think, you know, I'm the only governor in the entire country with a divided legislature. So for us to make any progress, including the substantial progress we've already made, it requires us to come together, Republican and Democrat alike, and put the good people of Pennsylvania first. So I'm going to keep doing what I've always done, bringing people together to get stuff done for Pennsylvanians. Not to look backwards, not to hold grudges, but to look forward in common purpose. Now, the next time the Commonwealth has the chance to come together to pass a budget is next summer. Today, I want to step up and create a bridge, some time and space for the House and Senate to be able to work together, to come together on this issue of funding mass transit, and to come together to get stuff done as we've been able to do so many times over the last two years. And while mass transit agencies across the Commonwealth are struggling, it is true and it is unmistakable that there is one agency that will not make it to the next summer with the status quo, and that is SEPTA. SEPTA faces serious challenges and is in desperate need of more funding. Without urgent support, they are going to be forced to dramatically raise prices and to cut services in a significant way. I'm here to tell you we can't let that happen. We cannot let that happen. It's not fair to the folks that rely on SEPTA to get to school or church or back home to their families. The moms and dads that just want more time with their kids and they need to know that that bus route is going to be there. The seniors who have to get to those life-saving appointments. You know, we've all been focused on cutting costs and being more competitive in our state capital. We've been able to accomplish both in many ways. But in order for us to continue to make progress in those areas, to cut costs and be more competitive, we need a healthy SEPTA to help us do just that. It's not just, though, uh, on that front. It's critically important because SEPTA is an economic driver for Pennsylvania. And as we step out onto the world stage with America 250, where we're going to be the host to the FIFA World Cup, the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, and so many other world-class events that are happening right here in the Philadelphia region, well, we've got to make sure that SEPTA is there for all those folks who come to visit. Yes, we've got to make sure SEPTA can serve our neighbors who rely on it every day, as well as the millions of visitors who come to Pennsylvania for their great American getaway over the course of the next several years. I think we have a huge opportunity in front of us with USA 250 coming to Pennsylvania, and we need SEPTA to be able to help support that, and I've made clear I will not let SEPTA fail. So today, I'm here at Frank Frankfurt Transportation Center to announce that I've directed our great PennDOT Secretary, Mike Carroll, who joins us today. You may remember Mike as the guy who lived out of his truck in Northeast Philly along I-95 for those 12 days when he got that road reopened. I've directed Mike to immediately begin the process of transferring $153 million <laughs> Thank you.
to transfer, to transfer $153 million from seven highway projects across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania immediately to fund SEPTA's needs. That money, that money will prevent service cuts, and that money will prevent the dramatic increases in fares that SEPTA has been contemplating, at least until next July. It's going to ensure the good people of southeastern Pennsylvania who rely on SEPTA every day that they're going to be able to get where they need to go, and they're not going to face higher costs. And it also allowed SEPTA to give more money to their workers, people like Thomas, who spoke to us earlier, in their recent contract negotiations with TWU, so they could reach this tentative one-year agreement on a fair contract and avoid a strike that would have been disastrous for our region. Let me be clear. While these funds will come from seven different highway projects across the state, none of those highway projects are under construction yet. In fact, none of them have even been put out to bid. They're a long way off. And hear me on this. There is no reason to keep that money on our balance sheet in the state when we can invest it in SEPTA right now and help this community. And to those Pennsylvanians from one of those communities affected by the transfer of this funds, we're still going to get your projects done for you on time. I am confident that as a result of transferring these funds, we can make a real difference. Now, in addition to transferring these funds, I want you to know that I have challenged each of the four suburban counties and the great city of Philadelphia to step up and add funding to this package to support our community. So as the Commonwealth immediately invests $153 million in SEPTA, I'm proud to announce that each of our five counties that support SEPTA will also be stepping up with significant investments from their local budgets. Thank you to these great community leaders. From the mayor to our county commissioners to our county council people, Everyone has stepped up and made clear just how valuable SEPTA is for this region. Listen, I want to close with this. I firmly believe that government can be a force for good in people's lives. And that when we work together, when we believe in one another, when we give a damn about the good people of Pennsylvania who rely on us, there is nothing we can't do together. We can solve big problems. We can come together and make a difference in the lives of the people who need us most. And we can get shit done together. And that is what we're doing here today. We're going to continue to bring that aggressive, can-do attitude to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We're going to continue to move the ball down the field, put points on the board, and celebrate our collective success. I want to thank all of you, not just for being here today, but for caring about the fate of SEPTA, for caring about the future of our communities, for caring about the people of this region. And I want to thank my team, who's done an extraordinary job on this work, from Amanda Warren to our PennDOT Secretary, Mike Carroll. And it is my pleasure to bring Secretary Carroll to the microphone now. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. What a great, great morning here in Philadelphia. Governor, thank you for your leadership. You know, as the PennDOT Secretary, many people default to roads and bridges, but I can tell you that PennDOT considers every mode of transportation vitally important, and that includes transit. You know, the governor mentioned that last year Pennsylvania led the nation in the repair of bridges and the restoration of highways across this Commonwealth. And I can promise you that with this flexing, PennDOT will continue to lead the nation 
in the repair of bridges and roadways across this state. Now, some might ask, how? Well, the answer is, with the Governor's leadership, the General Assembly smartly decoupled $375 million of money from the State Police, and that money was preserved in PennDOT's budget. And that money can be used for the delivery of roads and bridges across this state while we flex these federal dollars to support SEPTA here today. So, Governor, that work will continue on roads and bridges while at the same time making sure that we have a fully functioning SEPTA here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, I can tell you that the flexing of funds has been uh, done in the past. Uh, Governor Rendell did that years ago, and it led to the passage of a transportation bill, and I remain hopeful that, that flexing, the flexing that occurs today will result in a serious conversation that might result, and hopefully will result, in a transportation bill that will land on your desk next June, Governor. You know, PennDOT has 44,000 miles of roadway across this state, 25,000 bridges across this state, and transit in all 67 counties, all 67. You know, which of your children do you love the most? We all know the answer to that. It's, this, it's a tie. We love them all. When it comes to the PennDOT secretary, which mode do you love the most? Answer, all of them, including transit. So, Governor, we will continue to do our part uh, as PennDOT in support of all modes of transportation across this state. And I can tell you that I'm proud of the work that the PennDOT team does in every region of this state to advance the transportation interests of all Pennsylvanians from the city of Philadelphia to the shores of Lake Erie. Thank you, Governor, for the opportunity to lead. And I am thrilled to turn the podium over to my friend, Mayor Parker. Let me start by saying hello, everyone. Listen, I want to take you just on a quick stroll. Governor, there was an author and historian and humanitarian named James Baldwin. And whenever he was advocating for something that he believed in, and someone said to him, well, I care about that issue too, James Baldwin would say, I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. Governor, we know that getting shit done is not a slogan for you. We know it is the way you operate it. So I want to say on behalf of the people of the city of Philadelphia and quite frankly, the 790,000 residents from southeastern Pennsylvania who depend on SEPTA, Thank you for not just talking the talk, but walking the walk and delivering on today. <laughs> Secretary Carroll, you and I have been here before. We know what it's like, and, and I'm glad and this is really just for the benefit of the new supporters of, of, of mass transit funding. I quickly just want to take you on a little stroll back to something called Act 89 in 2013 when we in Philadelphia had a Republican governor, a Republican-controlled House, and a Republican-controlled Senate, and we delivered a $2.3 billion plan called Act 89 to fund roads, bridges, and highways right here, and we doubled the funding for mass transit. I'm here on the day to say, Governor, and it's important for me to affirm this as mayor of the city of Philadelphia. Thank you and Secretary Carl for delivering in a big way. We know you can't do it without a team. That's why we are super proud that we have today what we didn't have in 2013. And that was a Madam Speaker named Joanna McClinton, a leader named Matt Bradford, an appropriations chairman named Harris. And I'm sorry. You were there. He was there. He was there. Vincent Hughes, and I'm going to call a name, Chairman Hughes, that a whole lot of people in this room may not remember, but I'm thinking about for the chamber folks who are in the room, a gentleman by the name of Senator Rafferty, Hughes and I, Pam McCormick, and a whole, a whole, whole team who was a part of making that happen. 
You can't say you want a pro-growth in pro-business Pennsylvania, and you are willing to let set the death spiral because it is at the heart of the economic engine in Pennsylvania, southeastern Pennsylvania. Our economy moves because of Jason and because of Thomas Shaw and the work that they do. So if you claim to be pro-business, and if you claim to be pro-growth, I don't care what your party is, you will find a way to partner with our governor and our legislative leaders to continue the tradition that we started in the Commonwealth and definitely for my county leaders here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Let's get stuff done. And for any of the new advocates for mass transit, Council President Johnson, because we were around when we had Deliver in the past, for any of the new advocates of mass transit, if you want to sit down, and, and you do have some time to talk to some veterans who've been in a foxhole and had the ability to deliver, I'm willing to have a conversation with you at any time. Thank you so very much. It's my pleasure to welcome to the microphone Madam Speaker Joanna McClinton, one of my key partners in progress. Good morning, everyone. Let's give it up for our mayor, Sherelle L. Parker. We are so very grateful to be here today with our governor. When you think about the fact that 800,000 people, not only in the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, but across that invisible line, because I serve my neighbors in Delaware County, and our neighbors in Montgomery County, and our neighbors in Bucks and Chester counties, they need a way to get downtown. They need a way to get to work. My mother's aide told me last week, Joanna, I won't be able to come here overnight because I can't afford ride share day after day after day. So I don't know what y'all going to do, but good luck. And I didn't have to call the governor because we already have been working on some things. Mm -hmm. I said, we already been working on some things. No matter how many great meetings we had with our awesome delegation chair, Morgan Cephas, and my delegation chair in Southeast Jen O'Mara, we had already been working on some things. But council president, you can't put it all out there. You can't put it all out there. You cannot put it all out there because understand, it didn't take one time, it wasn't twice, but three different occasions we sent over to our friends in the Senate ways for every mass transit agency in this Commonwealth to get funding because this is not unique to our city. This is not only a problem in Philadelphia. I took 11 trips to Allegheny County from 2023 to 2024 and the Port Transit Authority, excuse me, is waiting for funding as well. Right where we work in Dolphin County and Harrisburg, there's a bus line. They need support too. But I look forward to our next legislative session where thanks to all the hard work of people in here and people outside, we retain our one seat majority. Majority. And I look forward working with our friends in the chamber and our friends that are taking care of labor and organized leaders and those who are working for our workers. Because understand this summer when we took our little L ride, and I've taken lots of them, Gov, I'm not going to bore you. That wasn't my first time on the L. Wasn't my first time taking the transit. Because understand that our transit system is so incredible, you can get through the whole delegation just on one. Right, Jason? And my right, Chair Dawkins, you can start in Upper Darby with Rep Curry and end up right here with Chair Dawkins. But we must continue and be vigilant in this fight. When we get back to Harrisburg in January, this will remain at the top of our agenda. And I'm so grateful I'm not going in the fight with just my Philly folks. Please welcome our great leader from Montgomery County, Representative Matt Bradford. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Governor Shapiro, for your bold leadership. And this is what leadership looks like. And no one should question when they say, will this governor show leadership? Today, you've demonstrated in the clearest way that we are 67 counties and we are one. But we need to have two chambers in that legislature work together. On three occasions, I'm proud to say that our chamber has passed SEPTA funding. We've passed mass transit funding. Chairman Nielsen, thank you for your work. We couldn't have done it without you. 
And let me tell you, on two occasions now, our governor has bought us time and space. And I recognize that we have work to do, as the good speaker says. It is not enough just to say that one chamber has passed transit funding. And when others say, let's do roads and bridges too, as the good governor has already said, we say, you're not wrong. We want to do that too. It's not an either or. It's both. And we can do both. House and Senate, Democrat and Republican, bipartisan, rural, suburban, urban, every portion of Pennsylvania sinks or swims when we make these investments in roads, bridges, and transit. Now look, this good man today has bought us another six months. And we can today celebrate that we have six more months. And we literally only have that six more months because of the decisive action of our governor. But our obligation isn't just to say how great are we today. It is to continue banging on doors with organized labor, with the Chamber of Commerce, with the business community, and Allegheny, Philadelphia, and all 67 counties, to say this is an obligation, this is an economic development issue, this is a workforce issue, this is about getting kids to and from school. We are going to spend the next six months in the most serious way possible to get this over the line. And we are not going to let party, politics, or region stand in the way. And we're going to do so thanks to the strong and decisive leadership of our governor. Thank you, Governor Shapiro, for giving us that time and space to do what we need to do. <clears throat> now, with that, I'm going to throw it over to the aforementioned Senator Hughes. He has the harder job in the minority, but he's the better speaker and the better dressed. So with that, the good senator from West Philadelphia. Give Josh Shapiro another round of applause. Don't worry, Jordan. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. So, Gov. I was eyeballing Bishop over there, yeah. and he's he's like, you know, can we can we, can we hold it back on the the language a little bit, oh. you know? All right, he's like, you know, it's like, you know, he appreciates the, the enthusiasm, but okay. you know, the you know, we'll, we'll he, edit the remarks. Edit the remarks. All right, all right. <laughs> um, so this region is known not just in Pennsylvania, not just in the country, but actually in the world, about its eds and meds, about it being a driving force for innovation in keeping folks healthy, solving health care issues. This, this region, this region right here, is known around the world. I had an interesting conversation the other day, Governor, with uh, representatives from Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. the finest children's hospital in the world, absolutely, without any question. And we talked about SEPTA. We talked about this funding issue. And it was, it was a very sobering conversation because we need to be clear that if fares had to go up, if uh, Roots had to be reduced. That is, is a health care reality that cannot be escaped. Mm -hmm. A surgery that may have been scheduled could not occur. A diagnosis that may have been planned could, could not happen. A, um, a, a, an innovation in the life sciences spaces that we work so hard on to try to make a difference and innovation may be delayed, not just days, not just weeks, months, maybe years. That it is, in fact, having this kind of system in place and an ingenious concept where we all come together to make sure that we're all doing better, come together to do better, it may fail, it may collapse. And that is what's at stake. So as uh, the great children's book goes, the wheels on the bus <laughs> go round and round. And they're not going to stop going round and round. 
They're going to keep going and keep going and keep going. And we're going to make sure they keep going. And I would encourage Leader Bradford that as soon as you reconvene, when we get all back together back in January, I would encourage you to be one of your first bills. Pass another transit bill. Pass another. Put the folks, put the people on the line to deliver. They say they care. They say they're about economic development. They say that about making sure that there's growth. Test them once again. Because it is not just SEPTA. Is as your legislation put together, it is all the transit systems all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that are in need of help. We're just first up. But I would encourage you one more time. Put them to the fire. All right, three or four more times. Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> it's Bradford, and you know how he is, okay? You know. Uh, so, Governor, on behalf of myself and all my Democratic senators who are uh, here in the room, uh, we certainly know the headache of our majority caucus, all right, and that reality that we deal with. Uh, but we also know if we keep pushing, we will get the resolve. So we thank you. We appreciate you. This is great leadership, and it demonstrates what can happen as we all come together. And with that, I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, We're keeping it plain. State Representative, the Chairman of the House Appropriations Committee, Jordan Harris. Come on, Jordan. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, we can do a little bit better than that. Good afternoon, everybody. I won't be before you long because I don't know about y'all, but it's cold in here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can act like it's not, but my hands is cold. Anyway, um, <laughs> listen, um, let me start by saying thank you to um, our governor, Josh Shapiro, for yet again um, making action match the words. Um, oftentimes, you know, people say with their mouths what they know in their mind that they should believe in their heart, but don't. And today the governor has shown us that what he says matches what is in his heart. And that is that mass transit is a vital part to the lifeblood of this commonwealth. So again, Governor Shapiro, we thank you for your leadership today in delivering for all of the people in southeastern Pennsylvania, and quite honestly, all across the commonwealth of Pennsylvania. To all of the men and women of TWU, uh, to all of the men and women of SEPTA who work and serve us every single day, we say thank you for your steadfast dedication to not only our transit system, but to our community. Listen, I grew up here in Philadelphia. I grew up in South Philly. I grew up taking the 2 and the 37 to get to school every day. You know, one of the first people that I would see outside of my mother was my bus driver. And the smile of the bus driver or the good morning from the bus driver is probably the first word that many of our young people hear every single day when those hundreds of thousands of them travel to get to their educational environment every morning. That smile or that good morning that our bus drivers give may be the only smile or good morning that some of our seniors hear and see when they're on their way to their medical appointments or on their way to go do their shopping. So, you know, our SEPTA workers aren't just bus drivers. They're really ambassadors yeah. for the city and for the region. So let's give it up for all of our men and women yeah. who work every single day. You know, my, my speaker and, and my leader talked about how we've passed mass transit funding in the House three times. Three separate occasions, we've shown that we care not just about, um, not just about the funding for mass transit, but what's actually behind those dollars. Listen, folks, Pennsylvania doesn't move 
unless SEPTA moves. That is a fact. Hundreds of thousands of people are getting to work, they're getting to school, they're getting to medical appointments because of SEPTA. And those folks that are going to work, guess what they're doing? They're paying taxes. And that tax revenue is what we use to fund a multitude of things across this Commonwealth. From our nursing homes that help our seniors, to the children's health insurance plan that our young people use when they go to the doctor, to all of that, you know, free breakfast that yeah. all of our young people we are did getting. That. We did that together. All of that is funded because mass transit, what you say, Vincent, the wheels on the bus go round. That's what's funding all of these things. I was trying to think of a kid's story myself. I was like, I, I don't have one, so I'm just use yours again. Look, the truth is, the truth is that this is major. It is important for everything. It is all interconnected. So look, this is just a stopgap. This is not the end of the road, and we know that. We're going to go back to Harrisburg with our one-seat majority. Even though it's one seat, it is a majority, and, and we like it. And I ain't going to hold you. It's better being on the first floor than the fourth. But anyway, um, we're going to go back to Harrisburg. You have our commitment that we're going to work in a bipartisan fashion. We've done it before. We'll do it again to get SEPTA funding and all mass transit and roads and bridges funding done for the people of Pennsylvania. Look, there are roads and bridges in Pike County, in Elk County, in Butler County that folks in southeastern Pennsylvania will never be on, right? But there are also people in, in, in Bucks and in, in, in people in, in Butler and Elk and Cameron County. Many of them may never come into our city. But that is what a common wealth is. It's about doing things for the common good. So today's work is for all of us. It's not just for southeastern Pennsylvania. It's for all of Pennsylvania. Because as said, SEPTA moves, all of us moves. Thank you again, again to Governor Josh Shapiro for your leadership in this work. It is my honor and privilege to bring up one of our partners right outside the city of Philadelphia in the glorious county of Montgomery, the chairwoman of, uh, you, you would enjoy that, the chairwoman Jamila Winder of Montgomery County Commissioners. Uh, good afternoon, and I'll, I'll say, Representative Harris, it is cold, I am cold, so I will also be brief. Uh, thank you, Governor Shapiro, uh, for your continued leadership. Um, I'm proud to partner with you in my capacity chairing the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners. I also want to thank my former colleague, the chair of the SEPTA board, uh, former commissioner Ken Lawrence for his leadership of, of SEPTA. I also, I also want to acknowledge our brothers and sisters in labor and all the great work to, workers uh, from SEPTA. Uh, you do great work throughout our region, and we couldn't do this work without you. Uh, so Montgomery County, much like the governor's office, is on a mission to repair our aging infrastructure. Better infrastructure improves quality of life, reduces transportation costs, and makes our region more attractive for investment and economic growth. Our economic productivity and density are only possible with a robust, efficient mass transit network to move people. Montgomery County recently partnered with its neighboring counties and DVRPC to send a letter to our colleagues in the PA House Transportation Committee in, su in support of a sustained solution for SEPTA. The counties in this region know that we bear a portion of the cost of SEPTA's operational and capital needs. This commitment we've made is a full understanding of the critical role mass transit plays in all of our lives. So, in co collaboration with my colleague, Commissioner Neil Makija, who's in the audience, Montgomery County proudly plan plans to increase our SEPTA funding from 8.3 million in 2024 to 9.4 million in 2025. to support our infrastructure 
and operation needs of SEPTA. And we know that with the great colleagues that you've heard from, from the state legislature, that they will continue to do the hard work to ensure that we've got a more sustainable solution. So again, thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share some thoughts with you. Um, but I'm proud to support this regional effort in making sure that SEPTA has all that it needs in order to thrive and be successful. So thank you. And how could I forget, I almost forgot, my colleague in a neighboring county, Delaware County, the chair of Delaware County Council, Monica Taylor. Del Coe. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. This is a good day. I would like to thank Governor Shapiro and your team for your efforts here uh, in securing mass transit. You know, as a Delaware County resident, and Delaware County being the second largest ridership in the region, it is so vital to our community that SEPTA stays fully functional at the rates that they are at. And I also want to thank Ken Lawrence for your leadership and the board at SEPTA for your leadership, along with everyone who works for SEPTA, all of our union brothers and sisters. Uh, and thank you for your efforts to secure SEPTA here in here in Philadelphia and our entire region. You know, SEPTA is the backbone for so many of us. You know, the 101 trolley line runs right behind my home. I take it to media, I take it into the L and into Center City. Um, it is just, it, over 800,000 people ride SEPTA every single day. It's those individuals who are riding it to work, who are riding it to school, to their doctor's appointments, and so much more. But as we all know, the pandemic hit SEPTA hard. And without some sort of relief, we know that this system was not going to be able to maintain its services. And so I want to thank you for stepping up, because that is what true leadership looks like. Your decision to redirect $153 million and to also work with our entire region to be able to sustain SEPTA through another year is so vital to our community. You know, as the five counties come together, securing over an additional $20 million of local funding to continue to keep SEPTA running smoothly, uh, you have even been personally involved in negotiations with SEPTA workers that ensure that the, fall, the fair contract, uh, which is crucial to maintaining it, all of these services will continue. On behalf of everyone in Delaware County and our region, I am here with my colleague on council, Christine Ruther. Thank you for your work. Thank you for keeping our region's public transportation system strong, sustainable, and ready for the future. And with that, I would like to introduce Mr. Greg Devins. Come up from Independence Blue Thank Cross. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am so excited to be here uh, in my capacity as the chair of the board of the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia. And Governor, I want to thank you for your incredible leadership today. I want to thank you for your commitment to getting stuff done. My mother was a Baptist minister, Sorry. so I, could, I have Sorry. to say stuff. <laughs> so, uh, but, but we're really excited. And as, as I shared with my colleagues uh, in the chamber a few weeks ago at our annual meeting, Southeastern Pennsylvania is not only the strongest economic engine in the Commonwealth, it is one of the strongest economic engines in the world and certainly in this nation. And so we know that in, this, in Southeastern Pennsylvania, SEPTA is really a prized asset of our region and it's critical to moving the talent that we require to move our businesses forward and to keep our businesses operating. So, we know that the, the solution that you offer today to build that bridge is critically important to all of the businesses and keeping our businesses running and keeping our employees uh, moving. SEPTA ensures access and mobility for everyone, and you heard people earlier talking about uh, all of the folks that rely on SEPTA, many of whom in this region are economically challenged. So having a fair 
uh, level that is, uh, that is reasonable is critically important. And support for SEPTA, as you've heard earlier, allows employees to get to work, students to get to school, others to get to critical health care, and other appoint appointments that are important to their lives. So we really appreciate it. It also makes sure that we're able to stay connected with family and friends. A lot of people rely on SEPTA to move around and interact with family and friends. And in this, this time of the year, that's critically important as well. It also helps to get cars off the road. And that plays a vital role in reducing traffic, reducing congestion, reducing the level of air pollution, all of which make our region a healthier place to live and work and play. As the region's economy goes, so goes the Commonwealth. So we know that roads, roads and infrastructure are important, but mass transit is a critical, critical issue that has to work for all of us. And I appreciated your comments, Governor, about all that's happening in 2026 that will put this region on the world stage. And we have to have a SEPTA that operates well in order to do that. Thank you. So, on behalf of the business community, I just want to say that we welcome the progress that was uh, reflected in your announcement today, Governor, and we look forward to a long-term solution to making sure that we have funding that allows transit to continue running, our transportation infrastructure to remain vibrant, and our region and this great commonwealth to continue growing and thriving. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. And I get to announce my very good friend, Reverend Bonnie Camarada. I know we have been here for a long time, for a little while, but I want to start with a scripture verse that probably is my favorite. They say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that we have a fantastic announcement about SEPTA. I want to introduce myself. I'm Reverend Bonnie Camarda. I'm the Divisional Director for Partnership for the Salvation Army in Eastern Pennsylvania and Delaware. And I'm so proud to serve as the co-chair for the Governor's Advisory Latino Affair. Thank you, Governor. We could not do it without you. I have another of my colleagues here, Anna Amarante Greg is here from the Latino Affair. I want to thank Governor Shapiro for taking action to support SEPTA and to turn to make sure that people who depend on SEPTA can continue to go to work. The narrative in my office this week was what are we going to do to get to work to help the least of this if SEPTA goes on a strike? How are we going to help the, shel the people who live in shelter? How are we going to provide food? People were nervous. People don't have the economy and say, I can take a lift. Then this announcement is very well received because we need this. I was looking at, at, at everyday living, and I know you guys all mentioned this, but without SEPTA, our seniors cannot go to the doctors. Without SEPTA, the people who take care of our seniors, like Speaker McClinton was saying, cannot get there to help her mother. Without SEPTA, our students cannot get where they need to go. Without SEPTA, we cannot have move the homeless population or the people who need us the most, the more vulnerable. With what SEPTA, we cannot provide a holistic care for the state of Pennsylvania. Then it is really, when I was talking, you know, we talk about this, I was really um, blessed. And I believe that the people of the city deserve public, um, public transportation. Thank you for all the workers. We couldn't do it without you. Sometimes you are the least of this in many ways, and you take a brutal from all our people sometimes that are really having a hard time. You are amazing people, and I hope you go home knowing that without you, we cannot do it. Then it's just an honor for me 
to have really to hear that the government hears Eastern Pennsylvania and that he is working in moving us along. I want to thank you, the senators, the state representatives who are here who are going to move us to the next level. This is only six months. We need to move forward. And without you, all of you, we cannot move forward. We are one when it comes to SEPTA. Thank you. In order for us to make progress with SEPTA, we need a partner who leads SEPTA into the future with uh, a keen eye on the direction they need to go and also with an understanding of what it takes to get them there, to build the coalitions necessary to make that happen. That person who is leading the way for SEPTA is the chairman of the board and as someone who has served this public ably in Montgomery County and someone who's been a dear friend of mine for 30 years, ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the board, Ken Lawrence. I didn't know I was going to get that, Governor, so thank you. Um, so I'm the last speaker, and yeah. I know we've had some complaints about the temperature. I feel fine, all right? I think it's beautiful in here. I'm going to start with this. If my governor's not wearing a tie, I'm not wearing a tie. Thomas, I want to thank you for welcoming, welcoming us all here to the Transportation Center today. You did a great job. And can we give a round of applause for all of the SEPTA frontline employees who are here? Thank you all for what you do each and every day. Is Brian Pollitt still here? Brian, thank you for staying at the table. Thank you for getting this done. Where's Scott Sauer, our COO? Scott, thank you. Um, I know the mayor left. Please let her know I acknowledge her and I thank her. Lee Sherell Parker, OK? Um, President Johnson is also gone, but they have been staunch allies and advocates for a long time. I could just start going down rows here, from council to our state house representative members uh, to our senators. But because I'm a former county commissioner, I do have to acknowledge my former colleague, the chair of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners, Jamila Winder, the chair of the Delaware County Council, Monica Taylor. I know that uh, Christine Ruther is here somewhere from Delaware County. And Neil McKeeja is here also from Montgomery County, our home county. And the leadership of, of Chester and Bucks couldn't be here with us. Um, I do need to acknowledge board members who are here, because um, we'll have a vote coming up in February. So uh, Scott Frieda, I know, is here, the governor's um, appointee. Dan Muroff from Delaware County. And Mike Carroll over there, we were on the L coming here together uh, to get to this event. Mike Carroll, who represents Philadelphia. Um, Leader Bradford is going to ride the L back with me, so we're, we're, we're going to do that. They have ways on there? <laughs> All right, I'm going to get to my formal remarks here now, though I could stay here all day, to be clear. Um, on behalf of SEPTA, our riders, our employees, on behalf of our region and our Commonwealth, I want to thank Governor Shapiro for standing with us and for supporting us here today. He has stated repeatedly that he would not let SEPTA fail, and he is a man and a governor who is true to his word. So thank you, Governor. SEPTA has been in the water for two years now, and we were going under. And today, Governor Shapiro has thrown us a lifeline. However, while this announcement today pauses the death spiral and allows us to tread water, we still desperately need a permanent, sustainable funding solution for SEPTA and mass transit in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And while some would frame this as a regional issue, SEPTA is simply too big and too important to fail, 
not just for this region, but for the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. As you've heard today, SEPTA moves this region, and this region, southeastern PA, the city of Philadelphia, Chester, Bucks, Delaware, and Montgomery County, we are the economic engine for this state. And that needs to be acknowledged, and we need that support. All of Pennsylvania benefits from investing in mass transit and investing in SEPTA. So today, while we can breathe, and I've taken several deep breaths today, um, we can pause some of the draconian measures under consideration to survive an additional fare increase and service cuts, but we need to continue to work with our advocates, with the business community, with all of you, the Southeastern delegation, the Philadelphia delegation. I know Rep. Cephas is here somewhere. Rep. Cephas blows up my phone on this. Um, we're going to keep working. Leader Bradford, how many times did you guys pass it? One, two, three, <laughs> going to four. Look, we're going to keep at this, but I want to thank you all. I want to thank my friend Governor Shapiro for allowing us to breathe, for throwing us that lifeline while we continue to work on a permanent funding solution. So thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.